Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here and welcome back to another episode of the Daily Crypto News. Today, I want to talk about something that just happened in the XRP community that the XRP people are surely not going to let go soon. <laughs> Vitalik Buterin, the founder of Ethereum, expresses resentment towards XRP Ripple, uh, or actually the Ripple CTO response to it. We have that to discuss today, but of course, we also have a lot more. Take a look, for example, at this. Australians can now use crypto to buy gasoline and, and actually donuts. A Quebec pension fund loses almost entirety of its Celsius investment. And a lot more is going to be discussed in this video. So if you enjoy these daily crypto videos, make sure you press that like button. And also, guys, make sure that you go ahead and check out my $10,000 giveaway. I think it's pretty cool. And all you have to do is just press the link down below and go through either one of these methods and boom, you are entered. And before we get into all that XRP and traditional crypto stuff, just all the crypto news, let's do a quick little crypto market overview. Today is a little bit more of a bullish day. You can see that the market is down 0.24%, but over the hour, things are looking pretty good. And I'm honestly thinking that that's because the stock market is doing so well right now. You can see uh, we're only at a slight 0.12%, which is actually significantly higher last time I checked. NASDAQ up a little bit. And I I'm just saying, look at the market and look at how it's moving. It's up and up and up. It's had a couple of negative days, which Bitcoin is basically following in a, in a similar direction. Honestly, it's actually fun and strange to see how Bitcoin is moving because it's not exactly like the S&P is doing, which it, it used to correlate a lot more with it. But a lot of these down days are together with the S&P's down days. Like, for example, from the 17th of forward, it went down for that. From Bitcoin, it went down from the 15th, but specifically from the 17th, it went down significantly harder. And so the same thing can be expected when the S&P goes back up, for example, from the 18th on forward. You can see Bitcoin starts to pick itself up from the 18th on forward as well. The fear and greed index, however, has fallen drastically. It was actually 41 yesterday. Today, it's at a small, I guess, 30. That means things are getting a lot more fearful, or at least the people are a lot more fearful right now. Obviously, that's because the prices dipped significantly, but it could also partially be because these inflation numbers and whatnot just came out prior. These should be good for Bitcoin, but recently, they have been pretty negative for the crypto prices, right? High inflation has not really done good for the economy in almost any way, shape, or form, even though in theory, it should be a really positive thing. Let's talk about this XRP situation. The Ethereum co-founder said that XRP lost its right to protection when they called ETH a Chinese-controlled piece because of the mining over in China. Proof of work, obviously. Ripple CTO said that Buterin is playing foul play by allowing the government to snuff anyone who disagrees with his views. So, again, Vitalik said XRP already lost the fight you know what, let's let's look at it from the source. Vitalik said on Twitter 12 hours ago as a response to Trustless State. It goes a little bit deeper. Trust, or David Hoffman said, yo, what's going on? You, and this is again Trustless State, you buy 20,000 worth of Solana, a restricted currency. You've now used 20,000 of your 30,000 annual limit. This has to do with the fact that they want to place $30,000 of an annual limit on you being able to purchase crypto. It's a piece of news I wasn't going to cover in this video, but I'm, I'm seeing it's, it's becoming relevant now. If you want to purchase more crypto, you are limited to buy a maximum of $10,000. Canada, what is you doing? Vitalik said, glad to have Ethereum people pushing against regulations that privilege ETH over other legitimate crypto. I have not dug into the details of what specifically is going on and to what extent it's a government thing versus a compliance decision of one business, but either way. David Hoffman said, if they had restricted XRP, I wouldn't have said anything. Now, to understand the situation, we have to take a look at Mo Chains' recent post about this 30k limit. Um, new regulation changes in Canada for crypto. You're allowed to buy as much Bitcoin, ETH, Litecoin, and Bitcoin Cash as you want, but any other crypto has a limit of 30,000 net buy per year. This is some new idea because those cryptos are not safe. They're called restricted cryptocurrencies as of this moment. And this is some very strange stuff for Canada. Some very strange regulation. It kind of coincides with this article that came out from Canada, though. Quebec pension fund loses almost entirety of its Celsius investment in less than 10 months, and that was a pretty significant hit. The move came just 10 months after CDPQ, 
and growth equity firm Westcap made a joint investment of $400 million into Celsius at a valuation of $3 billion. At that time, Celsius boasted over 1,000 employees, $25 billion in total assets, and $850 million in cumulative interest paid to depositors. And obviously, since these guys got involved with crypto, even though they did not directly buy it, Canada is like, wait a minute, let's, uh, let's think these things through properly. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's not allow them to do too much, right? David Hoppen said, I guess it's good for DeFi. Buy infinite amounts of ETH, Uniswap, no limits. I, I guess that's partially true, right? Um, because it's good for DeFi in the sense that you are now not allowed to buy these things on proper exchanges, I'm assuming, um, in these in these provinces. New uh, net buy limits will not impact you if you live in Alberta, British Columbia, Manitoba, or Quebec. So even though this news was from Quebec, it's not actually uh, in Quebec, the previous thing. So... Yeah, I guess there's two things which become interesting. The Bitcoin Cash, uh, sorry, wait. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. The fact that Bitcoin Cash is in that list, who who, who likes that? Litecoin, it's not really a popular crypto anymore. Uh, and the fact that you could just buy a lot of Ethereum and swap it over. But to get back to it, David says, if they restricted us from buying XRP, for example, I wouldn't have said anything. But Solana now is blocked, so hey, I'm speaking out. Vitalik said XRP already lost their fight, oh, sorry, guys, their right to protection when they tried to throw us under the bus as a China controlled, in my opinion. Quick little note Vitalik um, was, a, was or applied to be a Ripple intern like years ago. And this is actually December of 2020 when Ripple got sued. Uh, Vitalik said, Looks like the Ripple XRP team is sinking to new levels of strangeness. They're claiming that their shitcoin should not be called a security for public policy reasons, namely because Bitcoin and Ether are Chinese controlled, which um, is, is true. So he is saying, why haven't you given us an order? Shall we use our master notes to fork you guys and print a little Ether? <laughs> no. But that's obviously a little bit strange um, coming from Vitalik now. Specifically because he wanted to be involved with the Ripple before. Uh, but also, if you take a look at Ethereum and how it's controlled, it's definitely not that fair. Uh, and also, Ethereum had an ICO at some point, so they shouldn't get this, this, this free pass that they've basically been getting, like we cover almost every single day on the channel. If you're wondering what free pass I'm talking about, I'm talking about the fact that the SEC is not going after Ethereum, even though they had at some point an ICO. They're claiming now that it's properly decentralized, but that's not a prong of the Howey test. It's hard to measure this decentralization. There's no specific realm for it. How can you quantify decentralization properly? It's, it's, it's too undefined still. And for that reason, the fact that Ethereum had an ICO, they're now claiming, okay, but since we're a couple of years away from that ICO, they're now fine. To which a lot of people would like to say, well, but if they're a couple of years away from it, where do we draw that line? Is it one year? Is it three years? Why not go after them and then say, okay, up to this point, you are security, pay for that, and now you're good. Like in the same sense that Ripple, for example, right now is kind of fine, but they're just kind of suing them for the XRP from the past. Why are they doing that for Ethereum, for example? It's a very strange situation. But you got to look at it from another angle. So Vitalik is just saying that XRP already lost their right to protection from the crypto community that is, and potentially in Canada, when they tried to throw Ethereum under the bus as being China controlled, which again is mostly true. Maybe you want to put in a couple of banks in there, but at the end of the day, if the majority of your mining power comes from China, let's say 50% plus, then logically by the definition of 51% of, of attacks, I guess, or by the rules of majority, you're, you're mostly China controlled at that point. Is that a bad thing? I wouldn't say that. Is it by definition true though? I would say yes, but I digress. The more important point here is he's saying, just because they called you out for being what you are, which is not necessarily too crazy of an attack. It's like a defense mechanism of saying, hey, why are we being attacked so much when a lot of other cryptos which are trying to evade your US rules and whatnot, or are even more of a risk to investors, why aren't you going after them? And then Vitalik is saying, just because they called us out for it, they don't deserve protection, okay? So obviously the uh, Ripple side was like, excuse me. So XP Libracoli said, you guys gonna respond to this? Ripple team. And David Swartz said, quote, the government should punish projects that disagree with our narrative, end quote. Seems pretty on brand for Ethereum. Also, I do think it's perfectly fair to apologize. Oh, sorry, guys. And, and, 
Okay, give me a second. Analogize miners in proof of work systems to stockholders and companies. Just as eBay stockholders earn from the residual friction between buyers and sellers that eBay does not remove, so do miners in ETH and Bitcoin. Just as eBay stockholders want to leave as much friction between buyers and sellers as they can because that's their revenue stream, so do miners in Bitcoin and Ether. So that's part of why they have higher fees than the XRP ledger. Do you think this debate should be settled by the government or the market, Vitalik? This quotation wasn't pulled from some attempt by Ripple to get the government to regulate ETH, was it? You know, it's not an attack towards you or anything like that. And uh, King says, King Solomon says, this is savage for, for my standards. And um, David says, damn, I share a name with this guy. Um, yeah, I guess he got ratioed a little bit. <laughs> you just you don't deserve your name. And uh, he's going off a little bit further. Again, this is no hate towards him. You know, everybody got their own opinions on these matters. Some people are Ethereum fans. Some people like Ripple. I personally think, let's be fair to every single crypto. I don't think XP is a security. And I don't think that this opinion is it's just not something i agree with you know but it's his opinion so let's respect that i guess but it says itt blue check marked ripple officials dog whistling to the xrp army when did crypto twitter get so brain dead so to that i would only like to respond just check for a second who just check for a second who david swartz actually is if there's one person on earth that's still alive that we know of that knows a lot about cryptocurrencies and about blockchain technology. I'm going to say it's David Swartz. He's like my in my top three of most knowledgeable people in the space. If we're saying blue checkmark Ripple officials dog whistling the XRP army, I think you could really better state blue checkmark Bitcoin optimizer is the right word, right word. As I believe in 2011, he even optimized Bitcoin code. Um, so it's not as if he's like an XRP only type of person. I think he's just a problem solver in that degree. I'm not so sure why there's such a huge amount of hate, but I guess it's, it's the way that the crypto goes, right? There's a lot of this maximalism. There's a lot of this hatred. I don't think it's necessary whatsoever, but it is the way that it goes. It's interesting to watch all of this though, guys. I, I keep looking through thinking, hmm. But yeah, as I said, that's kind of like the curse of the crypto space. It is what it is. So, yeah. Um, there was one piece I, I kind of hinted at the start, right? I kind of don't think it fits the video too well, but Australians can now use crypto to buy gasoline. It was actually kind of to do with my inflation post from a little bit earlier, the fact that things are changing quite rapidly. Crypto obviously is getting more and more regulation around the world, and it probably won't be too long before you can actually pay with crypto for everything. Where I live over in Dubai, you can actually basically purchase anything with crypto. Your apartment is fine, your car is fine, all that stuff is fine. I'm going to say just normal groceries. I'm not sure exactly how you could do that, except for through a crypto sort of card. But through that, you can basically purchase anything anyway, because it's just a Visa or MasterCard. But let's just say it like this. Crypto is developing like crazy. The massive adoption is already here, even though people are not noticing it just quite yet. As far as I'm concerned, or I guess no, it'd only be a couple more years before crypto is literally everywhere, though. It's being built in the background so significantly, so hard. And yeah, either you get with the program or you're left behind. So that was it for today's video, guys. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you press the like button and subscribe to the channel. And I'll definitely see you guys again in another crypto video later today.